Hello and welcome back everyone. This is Taiba Littles with another Scout 5 tutorial or Shortcut to Lot version 5. And in today's tutorial, we're going to talk about how to place an image on your mat. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe so that you're able to see other videos like this as well. So let's begin. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is go to File, Place Image. Okay, and this is one of the first problems that many of my subscribers have. When they want to place an image, it's grayed out right here. It's a very easy fix. All you have to do is go to Format, and instead of All Images, select All Files. And in that way, the image that you would like to upload will no longer be gray. So we're going to click on it. So let's take a moment to look at our image. Our image, the best way to do this technique that I'm going to show you is by having images that are like maybe three to five layers, um, or three to six layers. This one has five, so it has black, the blue, the purple, the brown, and the dark brown. In the previous video that I also include in the description box, I actually showed you how to keep uploading the image in order to break up the layers. But in this video, I'm going to show you another technique. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is make sure this, this image is selected. We're going to go to Trace. And we're actually going to work with the single color. In image settings, you have three different modes. You have monochrome, color layers, and single layer. So if you select single layer, the first layer that's going to come up is brown. So we're going to go ahead and go with that one. Okay, so now that we have our brown layer, click off it. We're going to click somewhere else on the image that's not part of the image and go to trace again. The next layer, make sure it says single color. Click on this so it'll activate this box. We're going to hover over the different colors of the image and you see it changes in this box. The next one we're going to do was black. And we just repeat the process. Click on the white area, trace, click this box. Then we're going to do purple. Click that box again, trace. Okay, and then we're going to do the blue. And then if you pay attention, this brown is different from the skin tone. So that's going to be our last layer. Click off the, the image again, trace, select this box, and hover over the mouth. Okay, so just that quickly, we actually covered all of the layers in this design. And I'm going to show you what happens when you pull off the original. You have this. Now I'm examining my image and I see white areas on my image. I'm going to show you a technique that a lot of people overlook when they're creating layers with images. We're going to delete this. Also over here, you can access your layers tab because we're about to work with this. So in case you don't see your layers tab on top, you can actually just click this and click that arrow. And also while we're here, you can actually drag your your layers box like this so that you're able to see all your layers. I like my layers tab big like this. Another one we're actually going to work with, just click this box, we're going to actually work with fill stroke. So I'm going to move my fill stroke because I want to work with my colors and just put these boxes back. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to go to edit, select all, right click, appearance, add shadow. I want to add a thin black layer. Select my black at about 0 0.020 because I want to be able to have a bottommost layer so I can get rid of the white that's around there. So now we're looking at our layers tab. I want you to pay close attention to this. This is the bottommost layer. This is the topmost layer. So since this is a vinyl project, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click in my layers tab and just rename them. And this is a personal preference. You don't necessarily have to do this, but with working with SVGs, you want to try to keep them as organized as possible so that when you actually export it to Cricut or Cameo, then it will export much smoothly. Okay, I name my layers this way because when I'm doing a vinyl project, this will be the first layer, second layer, third layer, fourth layer, fifth layer, sixth layer. So just kind of briefly show you what I have. I'm going to put this, for, this is going to be the first part I'm going to put on my transfer tape. Then this is going to be the second part. Then the third. Then the fourth. Then the fifth. And then the sixth layer is my shadow. That's going to be the back end of it. 
Now, if I was doing an HTV project, which is a hot project, what I would do is I would lay down the black first, then I would lay down the brown, then I would lay down the black hair, then I would lay down the bow, then I would lay down the, I'm sorry, the ribbon, and then the bow, and then the mouth. So now that we're finished with this project, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Edit, Select All, and I'm going to make it a little smaller by holding the Shift key and dragging it. Also, while we're here, if you're looking at position and size menu, you can actually size it how you would like. So I would probably want this decal about 3.5. So that's a good size. So I have this right here. What I'm going to do next, just for safety measures, go to Edit, Select All, File, Export. And I'm going to export this as Scal 5 um, Girl. I'm saving it to my desktop as an SVG file. Go to save. Make sure selection only and design space compatible are selected. Then select OK. And now that we have a moment, I'm going to go to Cricut Design Space and we're going to actually work on how to upload it. So we're going to open this up, go to Upload, Upload Image, Browse. And I named her Scal 5 Girl. And the SVG will pop up. Go to Open. Go to Save. Okay. Click on it and go to Insert Image. And I just uploaded it to my mat in the same way that I had it in Scal 5. It actually pops up in Cricut. Now I'm going to show you how to break this SVG down. Okay, after we get it into our Cricut Design Space, we're going to ungroup it because I am going to do some registration marks. I do registration marks for a lot of my layering projects. Um, I may end up doing registration marks for this project in particular because I have a shadow and I want to make sure I layer everything right. So the whole purpose of your registration mark is so that you can lay your image on top of each other exactly so that it'll look as close as it does on the screen. On your actual project so since we have six layers I'm going to need six stars so I'm going to copy and I didn't even have to copy all I had to do was just duplicate so go and duplicate this so I can get six stars and duplicate that again okay and in my last video I actually did a technique I'm um, using the position and access. So with my position and access, I'm going to write it down. My position and access is 7.865 by 2.639. So just taking a moment, write it down. 7.875 by 2.639. Three, nine. And if this is the first time you've seen this, then um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I'm doing. So I just get this and I put in 7.875, enter, and then 2.639. And all I'm doing is just laying the stars on top of each other. 7.875, enter. 2.639, enter. 7.875, enter. 2.639, enter. 7.875, enter. 2.639, enter. Last one. 7.875, enter. 2.639, enter. Okay, so I have all of my stars. We're going to delete this one. Press the red X. So I've got all of my stars. I'm going to hide the other ones because we're not going to work with them. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to weld these pieces. So the whole purpose, like I said, of your registration mark is because you want to be able to layer your project perfectly. So we're going to hold down the shift button, do the first star, weld. Okay. Then we're going to do this. Hold down the shift button, 
select the next one, weld, select the next star, hold down the shift button, weld, select the next one, hold down the shift button, weld, and just keep repeating this process until you have all of your parts with registration marks, weld. So all of the stars are here. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and go to a range and top bar. We're gonna send that to the back because that's the back layer. And then all of our layers are where they're supposed to be. Well, actually this brown needs to go move backwards, move backwards, move backward. Oh, move backward. And I moved it right back. We're going to put it back in the order we had it. Okay, and then we have the black, which will go to the back, like so. And then we have the mouth, which is to the front. And these two can actually be interchangeable, but we had it up here, move forward. Okay, so now that I have all of my layers, I have my design size. What we're going to do is we're going to go to make it, and I'm going to show you how it looks. So we have our registration marks and in a perfect world, what happens is that it lays right on top of that star. So that's the whole purpose of putting registration marks on your projects so that you're able to layer them. And this is for beginners. And this is actually for intermediate um, cricketers as well, because sometimes we need a little extra help as far as making sure our design lays like it's supposed to. So you guys, that's the end of the tutorial. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and try to cut this image. I may end up doing it live so that you guys can see how I layer it because a lot of people ask me questions about layering. So I'll probably do my daughter's name, Trinity, and then make her a cup or, so, or a mug of some sort with this image on it. And then I'll show you guys how I do that. So if you have any questions, post them below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, feel free to join our Facebook group as well. All of those details will be listed in the description box. And I'll catch you guys in the next tutorial.